Good evening, and welcome to the 2019 Syracuse Law Honors Award Ceremony. My name is Kristen Duggleby, and I am the College of Law's Director of Alumni Relations. I am thrilled and honored to open the ceremony this evening to honor five of our finest and most influential College of Law alumni. Thank you to all of those who helped put together tonight's program, and especially to our alumni family members, near and far, who work every day to improve the legal profession, and who give back in so many ways with most generous to their alma mater. Before we begin the program, I would like to acknowledge our title sponsor. Please join me in thanking Botar Law, PLLC, for helping make tonight's ceremony and the party afterwards possible. <laughs> I would also like to acknowledge with respect the Onondaga Nation, the fire keepers of the Haudenosaunee, the indigenous people on whose ancestral lands Syracuse University now stands. It is my pleasure to hand the program over to the president of the Syracuse University Law Alumni Association, Amy Vanderlake Dygart. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this very special evening, a part of our Law Alumni Weekend. I'm Amy Digert, a very proud member of Orange Nation and the class of 2006. It is my honor to serve as president of SULA. In that capacity, I am especially proud to welcome you to the fifth annual presentation of the Syracuse Law Honors Awards. Thank you for setting time aside from your busy schedules and for joining us on a Friday night. I know many of you have traveled long distances to be here, coming as far away as Hawaii, front row here, and representing classes dating back to 1959, also in the front row here, I believe. <laughs> Whether you've been spending a few extra days in Syracuse or arrived just recently, came from near or far, I'm confident that you all, by the end of this weekend, will find much to inspire you and fill you with pride at being a Syracuse University College of Law graduate. I hope, too, that you catch up with old friends and make some new ones. Thank you all for the amazing support that you give your alma mater and for showing your true orange colors by returning this weekend. As you know, the college was founded in 1895 when the legal profession was smaller and much different. Our alumni association was created to provide a link between the past, present, and future of the College of Law. And there's perhaps no better time than now for Sula to advance that mission as the profession changes dynamically in rapid and complex ways. And as we welcome JD, JDI, and LLM students, all future alums from all over the world. A weekend like this is important because it gives us the opportunity to connect with friends, colleagues, beloved faculty members, and meet new faculty members and current students. Sula welcomes your participation in advancing the college's mission by deepening our connections to each other and with our faculty and students. The students are not only the future of the college and the Alumni Association, they are the future of our profession, our civic life, and our democracy. By helping to shoulder their efforts through gifts of time, energy, and financial resources, we will advance their careers and the mission of the college together. This year we celebrate reunion classes ending in four and nine. I know that we have a large presence from the classes of 1979, 89, 94, 99, and even alums from the class of 1959 celebrating their 60th anniversary. If your class year ends in four or nine, please stand. Let us also recognize future members of SULA, that is, current students who are here tonight. We look forward to welcoming you officially into the alumni family when you receive your law degrees next spring and beyond. There is much for us to celebrate this weekend, yet as we reflect on where we are and how far we have come, we must remember colleagues and friends who are no longer with us. Please join me in a moment of silence in memory of our deceased alumni, faculty, and staff. Thank you. On behalf of the SULA board, I now have the distinct pleasure of introducing Dean Craig Boys. As president of SULA, I have the good fortune of interacting with our dean frequently, and when I do, I am not only proud, I'm excited. All of us are the beneficiaries of his energetic and inspiring vision for the College of Law and for legal education. 
He and his team are rapidly delivering on his vision with tangible results. Please join me in welcoming Dean Boyce. Well, thank you, Amy. Thank you, Law Honors Committee and SULA board members. Your team works tirelessly to make the Law Honors Program such a success. And I also want to welcome all of our alumni, faculty, staff, students, and friends of the College of Law. It's so wonderful to see a full auditorium here and people enthusiastically coming back to their alma mater. I always look forward to Alumni Weekend and this event in particular with great anticipation. As I meet alumni all over the world, I'm continually impressed by the reach and influence of the College of Law family. I'm grateful to all who comprise this strong cornerstone of the college, and I'm fully aware and appreciative of the opportunities that our vast network provides to our students. Tonight, we celebrate five outstanding individuals whose dedication and leadership have benefited the college and Syracuse community, their own communities, society at large, and of course, our profession. It humbles me to share this stage with such accomplished individuals. You should know, though, that these exceptional men and women are just the tip of the iceberg, and that many more of our alumni and friends, near and far, are doing great things, College of Law diploma in hand. As this awards program grows each year, so do the number of nominations that we receive and the difficulty that we have in making selections. I know that this evening's honorees haven't just impressed the persons who nominated them, they have touched and influenced the lives of many others including our students, and that speaks volumes for them as individuals and as members of our community. When I think of your accomplishments and your continual dedication to the law, I cannot be more proud to lead the College of Law as your dean. Also with us tonight is another notable member of our alumni family. I'm pleased to share that Scott Carson, class of 1975, has been announced as the next president of the New York State Bar Association. Where is Scott? It's pretty remarkable. This makes a twofer uh, because he follows on the heels of Hank Greenberg, class of 1986, who was this year's convocation speaker and is the current president of the New York State Bar Association. Uh, before Scott and Hank, that honor had not been uh, carried by anybody from this law school going back to the early 90s. So it's very exciting. Before we confer tonight's honors, I want to acknowledge former law honors recipients who are here with us tonight. So if you don't mind, raise your hand or stand so that we can welcome you back home. Alex Epsilanti. <laughs> Judge William Hayes. Susan Horn, <laughs> Lee Michaels, <laughs> Professor Travis Lewin, <laughs> and Judge Fred Scullin. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Mark O'Brien of the class of 2014, a member of the Sula Board of Directors and co-chair of the Syracuse Law Honors Committee. Mark currently serves as a staff attorney for the Supreme Court of Virginia. Mark, I thank you and your colleagues on the board for your hard work and dedication toward tonight's program. I know that vetting candidacies for the law honors is no easy task, and I know that you and the board take this charge very ser seriously and with great pride. I'm grateful for your diligence, and for your passions. Let's give Mark and the committee a round of applause. Dean Boyce, thank you very much. And good evening, fellow alumni, faculty members, students, and friends. It is my honor to serve on Sula's Board of Directors and to co-chair the Law Honors Committee. It's been five years since I left, I would say these halls, but they weren't these halls, uh, the College of Law as a newly minted JD, ready to embark as a baby attorney, yet I have never been prouder to be a, a graduate of the College of Law. Our College of Law family, as you know, is an amazing group of people, but our distinctions and accomplishments sometimes get lost in the shuffle of 
busy schedules and lives. When the College of Law finally settled into its new home here in Deneen Hall, the time seemed right for the Sula Board to propose an annual awards program as a focal point of reunion weekend. It would be a chance to showcase the incredible breadth, experience, and accomplishments of our law school community. So in 2015, the Sula Board formed the Syracuse Law Honors Committee and tasked it with, to use a phrase well known in American law, standing up this new program with all deliberate speed. Administering these honors is daunting and it is time consuming for the committee members, all of whom have significant professional and personal responsibilities. Nonetheless, committee members solicit and consider nominations, select the list of proposed honorees, obtain final approval of those honorees from the dean, and then work with the dean offices, uh, dean's office rather, on the program, including obtaining medals, preparing citations, staging this ceremony, and so forth. We are very proud and happy to do so. I want to acknowledge briefly uh, the Law Honors Committee members with whom I am privileged to serve and whose efforts, confidence, and dedication were instrumental in getting us to this point here tonight. Co-Chair Rich Levy of the class of 1977, who unfortunately could not be with us tonight. Nelson Atkins, uh, excuse me, Atkin of the class of 1974. <laughs> Amanda Dundero of the class of 2011. <laughs> Amy Vanderlyke Dygert of the class of 2006. <laughs> Jesse Fitel of the class of 2016. Suzanne Galbato of the class of 1998. And ex officio member, past Sula president, Carrie Ng of the class of 2002. We, of course, are ably supported by Assistant De Dean Sophie Dejeuner and her team in the Office of Advancement and External Affairs, including Kristen Duggleby, Melissa Cassidy, Fritz Diddle, and Lisa Ledoux. And of course, a very special thank you to Dean Boyce, who has fully embraced these honors from the moment we conceived the idea and he arrived at the college. Please join me in thanking all of them. <laughs> Although ours is a law-centric community, the Syracuse Law Honors Program celebrates distinguished achievements in any field of endeavor by all members of the College of Law community. In other words, these awards are not just limited to alumni nor restricted to a person's professional life or particular legal accomplishments. In this spirit, this year we received nominations from alumni worldwide, as well as from faculty, staff, students, and other friends. And as you are about to hear, the five recipients that the committee recommended and that Dean Boys approved are remarkably uh, distinguished as individuals, professionals, and members of society. They are exemplars of the spirit of our alma mater. Their accomplishments help make our profession and our world a better place. Indeed, it is a privilege to be in their presence tonight. Finally, let me emphasize that this honors program belongs to everyone here. Each of you, each member of our extended family can play a role in this process, which begins by submitting nominations for this high distinction and not to get too far ahead of myself, but we are now soliciting nominations for next year's awards. <laughs> nominations may be submitted through the Syracuse Law Honors page on the College of Law website, and I urge you to exercise this franchise because doing so enriches our law school. It cements connections among our community, it inspires our students, and it advances our profession. Without further ado, let me turn the podium over to Assistant Dean Sophie Dejeuner, who will lead us through the presentation of the medals. Good evening. Thank you, Mark, for those inspiring words, and thank you to the Sula Board and members of the Syracuse Law Honors Committee for your hard work in administering this year's program. Now it is my pleasure to introduce to you this year's five recipients. The Honorable Therese Wiley Danks, class of 1991. 
an active and engaged career in the law and exceptional contributions to the advancement of our legal profession are the essence of United States Magistrate Judge Danks. After graduating cum laude from the College of Law, Judge Danks practiced civil litigation and trial work in Syracuse for 21 years. First as an associate at the McKenzie Law Firm, and then as a founding partner of Gale and Danks, which she formed with her dear friend and partner at McKenzie, Catherine Gale, class of 1978. In 2012, Judge Danks was appointed the first woman to serve as a United States Magistrate Judge for the Northern District of New York. Judge Danks is a director of the Volunteer Lawyers Project of Onondaga County, and she served in leadership roles in several other community organizations, including as chairwoman of the board of directors of the Hiscock Legal Aid Society, secretary of the board of directors of St. Elizabeth's College of Nursing, and director of the Onondaga County Bar Association. As president of the Central New York Women's Bar Association, she was especially committed to providing legal services to women in need and helped establish the organization's award-winning domestic violence legal assistance clinic. It's no wonder Judge Danks has received numerous honors for her service, including Vera House's Sister Mary Vera Award for her work to prevent domestic violence, the Central New York Business Journal's Women in Business Award, and the SUNY Upstate Medical University President's Award for Outstanding Volunteer Faculty Service. Judge Dank serves on the Board of Regents of her undergraduate alma mater, Lemoyne College, and is a frequent visitor here at the College of Law as a guest lecturer, as a judge and evaluator of our advocacy competitions, as an advisor, and as a member of our volunteer corps. She also helped to establish a new tradition in Deneen Hall, a naturalization ceremony in this courtroom. Richard Alexander, class of 1982. Richard Alexander is an influential figure in a rapidly changing profession and an evolving and complex legal market. After graduating from Brandeis University in 1979, magna cum laude with high honors, Richard earned his law degree from the College of Law. He headed to Washington, D.C., where he spent his first years in practice as an attorney in the Enforcement and Compliance Division of the, of the Office of the Controller of the Currency. There, he drew the attention of a distinguished law firm, Arnold and Porter, whose partners successfully recruited him, and where he developed a significant practice representing financial services companies in enforcement or investigative proceedings brought by federal and state agencies, and where he became a partner in short order. He became the firm's managing partner in 2005 and its chairman in 2016. He was recently reelected by his peers to a second term. Lawyers and staff at Arnold and Porter praise Richard's commitment to the firm's clients and employees and his impeccable reputation and highest ethical standards. They describe him as a compassionate leader whose attentive and always respectful manner inspires and motivates. Even as he devotes countless hours to managing his firm, representing clients, and promoting it as, uh, what is known as one of the world's leading law firm pro bono programs, he has spearheaded the firm forward with vision, recently guiding its merger with another powerhouse firm, New York-based Kay Scholler. Elizabeth Respis, Arnold and Porter's executive director, who has col collaborated with Richard for more than 25 years, touts his ability to cut through volumes of information to find comprehensive and production solutions to problems with compassion and an eye for what is right for the organization and all of its U.S. and overseas employees. Very fortunately, Richard serves on the Board of Advisors of the Syracuse <coughs> University College of Law and on Syracuse University's Board of Trustees. He is also chair of Justice and Aging, a national organization fighting senior poverty through law. He and his wife, Emily, share a profound commitment to social causes and public service, so much so that they have established a scholarship for law students who aspire to become public servants. Bernard T. King, class of 1959. Bernie King came to Syracuse to attend college and never left the area devoting his entire adult life to his profession, his community, and his family. He too graduated from Lemoyne College in 1956 with a BS in Industrial and Labor Relations, 
then graduated cum laude from the College of Law as a member of the Order of the Coif. His nominator describes Bernie as having literally shaped the legal landscape of employee benefits and labor law. After law school, Bernie joined a small upstate New York firm originally founded in 1933 and propelled it into the nationally reputed Blitman and King, a powerhouse in the fields of labor relations, pensions, employee benefit law, and alternative dispute resolution. In addition to his full and decades-long caseload, Bernie has amassed a remarkable list of professional accomplishments. As chair of the labor and employment law sections of both the American and the New York State Bar Associations, as a panel arbitrator and a former director of the American Arbitration Association, on the ABA House of Delegates, and most recently, as a member of the ABA Board of Governors. He's also been a lecturer at Cornell University School of Industrial Labor Relations, is a prolific writer and a frequent speaker at employee benefit conferences around the globe. An equal opportunity volunteer, he was a member and vice chair of the Lemoyne College Board of Regents and president of its alumni association and served on the College of Law's Board of Visitors, now known as the Board of Advisors, for two decades. He has also been a frequent guest speaker at the College of Law. Bernie has served on the boards of the Onondaga Industrial Development Agency, the Syracuse Model Neighborhood Corporation, United Way Central of New York, Manlius Pebble High School, the Syracuse Advisory Board of the Salvation Army, and on the Naval Academy Selection Board for the 33rd New York Con Congressional District. And yes, Bernie still managed to find time to raise a family. In fact, his daughter, Patty, met her future husband, Mike Dory, here at the College of Law as members of the class of 1990. Lieutenant Thomas M. Caruso, class of, 19, uh, class of 2014, my apologies, Tom. <coughs> Few graduates have made such a lasting impact on our College of Law in as short a period of time as Lieutenant Caruso. Now a lieutenant in the Judge Advocate General Corps of the United States, Tom advocated tirelessly for veterans' rights even before he left the halls of, Deneen, of, Deneen, of, of the College of Law. Tom graduated from the University of Notre Dame in 2010 and then earned joint degrees from the College of Law and the Maxwell School, summa cum laude, in 2014. During his second year of law school, he helped establish the Veterans Issues Support Initiative and Outreach Network, otherwise known as Vision, a student-run organization providing pro bono legal aid and resources to veterans across central New York. His goal was to fill a gap in legal services for veterans. Tom's efforts were so successful that just three years after founding Vision, he and classmate Josh, Josh Keefe launched what is now known as the Betty and Michael D. Wall Veterans Legal Clinic. It operates as a part of the college's Office of Clinical Legal Education. The Wall Clinic is the first in New York to provide free legal assistance to veterans seeking benefits from the VA or the military discharge upgrades they deserve. Since graduation, Tom has not only kept close tabs on the clinic, which he co-founded, he has served as the vice chair of the American Bar Association's Military and Veterans Health Law Task Force, chair of the Veterans Committee of the Syracuse University Alumni Association, and he continues as an advisor to the college and SU on veterans programs. He is a founder of Lawyers for Warriors, Hampton Roads, a first of its kind project in conjunction with the ABA's Military Pro Bono Project, which aims to improve the delivery of pro bono legal services to military personnel and, and families in the Hampton Roads, Virginia area. Fittingly, Tom has received the ABA's Outstanding Military Attorney Award, the Onondaga County's Pro Bono Service Award, and the Mid-Atlantic Junior Officer of the Year Award from the U.S. Navy's Regional Legal Service Office in Norfolk, Virginia. To say that Tom Crusoe exhibits extraordinary vision and leadership is an understatement. We are grateful for his service to our country and to his law school alma mater. Eileen D. Millette, Class of 1974. Eileen graduated from Syracuse University in 1971 with a BA in Latin American Studies and received her law degree right here from the College of Law. From here, she ventured to the Big Apple and launched what would become an impressive career in public service and private practice. From her start at the office of the District Attorney of Queens County 
to the New York State Attorney General's Office, to the New York State Department of Environmental Cons Conservation, and eventually the Interstate Environmental Commission, she first helped to protect the fundamental right of any and all criminal defendants to a speedy trial, and then turned her attention to a cause that defends, literally, all of us on Earth, the protection and stewardship of our environment. In 2007, Eileen transitioned into the private sector. She currently is a partner at the New York firm of Philip Snyzer, where she counsels national and international clients on environmental regulation, compliance, sustainability, Superfund and hazardous waste cases and enforcement proceedings. Through it all, Eileen has found time to give back to her profession and her community. She currently serves on the Committee on Character and Fitness of the Appellate Division of the New York State Supreme Court for the First Department. She is also Vice Chair of the Environment Committee of the ABA Business Law Section, a member of the Executive Council of the New York State Bar Association Environmental Law Section, an editor of the American Law Institute's Practical Real Estate Lawyer, and a member of the Board of Advisors of the New York City Environmental Law Leadership Institute. Let's hear from each of our recipients. You know, I grew up here. Um, I was born and raised in East Syracuse. Uh, my roots are very deep here. Uh, and my father taught at Lemoyne, where I went to college. And I, I, I expressed an interest in going to law school. Um, and he said I should go talk to a professor there, Marianne Donnelly. Her husband, Sam Donnelly, was an SU Law School professor. And I really enjoyed her classes. I took two of her classes, and then I took a constitutional law class in college, and I was hooked. Professor Richard Goldsmith um, taught civil procedure my first year of law school. There was a time when he called on a student, but they said, uh, I think I'll pass today. And without missing a beat, Professor Goldsmith said, maybe you will, and maybe you won't. And then he started laughing, and the whole class started laughing. Uh, and it, it eased the tension in the room, as you might imagine, it was pretty high. I think within the next week I volunteered to answer some questions in his class uh, so that that wouldn't happen to me. He was very good about it and I, re I, I liked Professor Goldsmith very much and took him for pretty much everything he taught. Uh, he taught in a couple of environmental law classes and I used to, I remember sneaking um, a sign on his door, a Happy Earth Day sign every Earth Day. I love going back to the College of Law uh, and helping out because I think it's really important to train the next generation of lawyers. Um, I think it's really important that they see College of Law graduates involved in their college. Lots of times as a judge, you don't preside over very many happy events. Um, a citizenship ceremony is probably my favorite thing about this job. Something always happens during one of those ceremonies where I find a connection between myself and somebody uh, uh, who's being naturalized, um, and I also want the, co the students to see it, because I think it's really important uh, everybody see at least one of those ceremonies. Uh, we've all had, all of our ancestors, most of us, unless you are a Native American, have ancestors that have come through uh, the process uh, and become citizens, and we can't forget that, that that's what our country is made of. This award is, it's it's really special. Um, I'm very humbled by it. I'm, I'm very grateful for it because I can think of dozens of other people who I feel are much more deserving of this award than I am. To receive this award gives me a little bit of confirmation that I might be doing something right. Law school was not always fun, but um, my, my best memories are the people uh, that I got to meet and I had some wonderful professors. Don Braverman was one of my favorite uh, professors. He was um, very invested in both the academic subject and, al and also our professional development. I've tried to bring what I learned at the university to my job, try to be a better listener, um, try to be uh, someone who's forward looking in terms of the changes that are going on in our industry. Um, not making decisions in the moment, but thinking about things going forward. I'm not on the board as a, as a spokesperson for the law school. I'm there for the greater university. Having said that, I think having a voice 
to speak to some of the opportunities and challenges for the law school are very, very important. Um, and being able then to communicate some of the university opportunities and challenges back to the law school is something that I think can be value added for the law school itself. I think the, the most important thing is, uh, I like to say, dealing with the kids. They're kids to me now. I love talking to the, to the students about the, the legal profession, how to be successful in their career. I love recruiting people. Um, some of my best associates at this firm are people who went to the law school. They're not only my favorite people because I've connected with them, but they're doing phenomenally well. We've been very blessed in life. Um, and as a result, we want to give back. And we have funded some scholarships, particularly for people who are interested in going into public service, which we think is a noble calling. My wife and I think it's very, very important. So our scholarships are designed to encourage that. And one of my favorite things is when I connect with the people, we've named these scholarships in, in honor of my parents. And it gives me an opportunity to tell them about my parents, but also to hear about their aspirations. I'm both honored and humbled to receive the award. We get a lot back from being connected to the law school uh, and the university. It's given me an opportunity um, to get to know the students better, get to know the mission of the law school. I'm very, very excited about the future of the law school and the future of the university. And to me, the, the award just gives me a further opportunity to use this as a, a bully pulpit to continue to be an ambassador for the law school. So I very much appreciate that. We had some great companionship in, in my classmates, and we had some outstanding professors. And one of, the, one of those was Dean Ralph Karras. He appeared by many to be a, a stern professor, but he had a great, generous heart. Professor Bob uh, Koritz was an uh, outstanding labor law professor and also a good friend. Professor Bob Rabin, who really was after my time at the law school, but I had a lot of good relationships with him. We worked with him through a ABA a Labor and Employment Law section project where he and some of the students at the school actually produced a labor law review, annual labor law review. So that was a, a nice experience. Outside of the classroom, probably my most favorite time was uh, Syracuse football and basketball, watching Jim Brown run the field, and uh, I've had season's tickets ever since. I think it's a natural desire to want to give back if you've been fortunate enough to have the advantages of a place like uh, Syracuse Law School. Fortunately, I've had the opportunity to be involved in a lot of educational efforts locally, and then things like Salvation Army and uh, uh, the Boy Scouts, uh, model neighborhood uh, corporation. I think the law school emphasized uh, excellence in the law, in the pursuit of the learning of the law, and I tried to continue that through my career and, and try to help build a firm that had those same high standards. Employing Syracuse Law grads is sort of a natural for me because I know where they're coming from. I have a high regard for the professors that are recommending them. So it's just a very natural progression of assuring that we have a continuity of excellence in the firm in the field of labor and employment law and to represent working people. I think it's very meaningful because it's, uh, it's an award from the place where I started it all. Pursued the law degree at Syracuse, uh, mostly because of the national security program that they had there. I, I knew I was gonna go into the military and the JAG Corps afterwards, and I couldn't think of a better place to help prepare me for that. There were so many professors that made an impact. Uh, professor Ryan was uh, my writing professor. Um, I mean, honestly, if not for her, I'd probably be writing memos in crayon. I mean, she really helped me out. Professor Banks from Inskit, um, he knew that a few of us were going into national security law and spent a lot of time, extra time training us and, you know, getting us ready for that field. And, you know, who better than Admiral Moret to, you know, kind of show us what's, you know, what it means to be an officer, uh, what it means to be in the field. There were a lot of challenges in setting up a veterans clinic. I remember within the first few weeks of school, we went to Dean Deb Ken and we were pitched the idea like we'd like to start a veterans clinic. 
little did we know how expensive and how, uh, how much um, infrastructure it takes to set up a new clinic. I got a call at 7.30 in the morning after Josh Keefe and I had been pursuing funds for the Veterans Clinic. And I got a call from uh, State Senator DeFrancisco telling me that he had just found $250,000 to start the clinic. Um, and that was extremely exciting. Josh and I had spent so much time uh, trying to get this thing off the ground. And it seems when I describe it, like it happened very easily, but there were a, a lot of hurdles. And frankly, until we got that call from Senator DeFrancisco, we weren't sure if it was gonna happen. Dean Arterian and then later Dean Boys were just so supportive the amount of trust it takes to look at two students and say, yeah, go run with this is unbelievable. They took a tremendous amount of risk um, and hopefully, you know, we made that pay off. I am incredibly humbled to be selected for this award. Um, when they called me and told me I was a winner, I, I was, there, there was a lot of shock and like, are you sure? <laughs> uh, when you look at the other award winners, you have judges and partners at law firms. I don't even know if I could get an internship with them. I owe so much to Syracuse and to the professors and to the deans there. The Navy taught me how to be an officer. Syracuse Law School taught me how to be a leader. And I'm forever indebted to them for that. In the 1970s, the early 1970s, you didn't have as many women attending law school as you do today. And so as women came into their own, we began to formulate a women's group. But that for me presented another issue because it meant that women wanted me to choose sides. I was being told, you really are a woman first, aren't you? And then I was being told by the black students, no, 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 you're really a black person first, aren't you? And you know, my response to that is, I really am both, and I'll always be both. You know, sadly, the legal profession has remained very static. Um, the numbers are somewhere between four and 5%, which of course doesn't even approximate the percentages that you have in our general society of people of color. Um, and if you are really going to help an individual. I mean, for example, I speak Spanish very fluently. Um, if a client comes to me and Spanish is their first language, I communicate with them much, much better if I can speak their language and they can understand me and we meet on that floor. So diversity, whether it's geographic, whether it's language, whether it's if you're, you know, Hispanic or Latin or Black or Indian, it's important because you meet the person much more easily and you communicate with the person in that way. The more I think people can see someone who looks like me practicing in a field where they wouldn't normally expect to see someone who looks like me, I think the more people are encouraged to think a little bit outside of the box, but also to think and be comfortable in the profession. Syracuse, I think, gets it. And I mean, Syracuse has always, starting as far, as far back as recognizing what the Syracuse 8 stood for. And so for me, the award is more about what it demonstrates for students who are coming into the profession and young women of color who are coming into the profession. And I hope that by them seeing me, that they will be encouraged and buoyed. A mis amigos latinos, la Universidad de Syracuse y la, el Colegio de la Ley es lo mejor. It's the best. I've watched this video more than once, and I don't know about you, and I've said it before, and I have to say it again, because it happens again. I'm struck by the love that is shown for the college and its professors and our community. Let us keep our honorees words close to our hearts. So here we go, as I call your name, please come forward to receive your medal. The Honorable Therese Wiley Danks, class of 1991, in recognition of your active and engaged career on the bench and your unceasing support of your community, the rule of law and diversity initiatives. Take your time. <laughs> Our Board of Advisors member and a trustee of Syracuse University, Richard Alexander, class of 1982. 
In recognition of your successful career focused on banking and financial services, your leadership on behalf of the college and the university, and your advocacy of justice for the aging. Bernard King, class of 1959, in recognition of your nationally recognized body of work in employment and labor law and for your service to the college and your community. Lieutenant Thomas Caruso, class of 2014, in recognition of your service to the nation as a JAG officer and your tireless work on behalf of justice for military veterans. Class of 1974, in recognition of your long and esteemed career in land use environmental law, your public service on behalf of New York State, and your championing of environmental issues. Congratulations, honorees. Before we conclude, I'd like to take a moment to extend some special thanks. Where would our college be without the committed scholars and teachers who comprise our faculty? We've heard some of that in the testimonials this evening. Will all of our faculty members who are here this evening please stand and be recognized? Supporting those faculty and the students that they teach are members of our dedicated and hardworking staff. Will all members of our staff, my colleagues and our students, please stand and be recognized. <laughs> the evening would not be complete without my personal thanks to SULA President Amy Digert and all the members of SULA's Board of Directors for their hard work to advance the college's alumni relations and for their planning and implementation of programs and outreach activities across the country. It's truly exciting to have this group of uh, energetic and young uh, alumni out there uh, carrying the flag for us. So will all SULA board members who are here please stand and be recognized. And finally, let us once again recognize the 2019 Syracuse Law Alumni Awards honorees. Thank you.